A huge thank you to Lottie, Lindsay and Ray for this wonderful pumpkin. Maybe next year we could have a pumpkin growing competition. We'll sow the seeds. Everybody likes a pumpkin around this time of year so they can carve it. But nobody usually eats it. So Mummy is going to show you how to eat it. What a lovely sight. The epitome of autumn and Halloween and lots of people, as Rose said, are buying pumpkins as they do every year. Now the sad thing is, is in the UK, we waste 8 million pumpkins every year. They go straight into landfill. Some people carve them for Halloween. Some people just use the small ones as they are and put them for decoration and then they go straight into the bin. That's 8,000 tonnes of wasted food just for pumpkins. In America, that figure is just under 6 million tonnes. That's a lot of wasted food. And this is such a versatile and delicious vegetable that I want to help you today to get the most out of your pumpkin. These are not cheap. Um, if you go to supermarkets, they tend to be on the cheaper side. This small one I got from uh, Tesco and it was 65 pence. So yes, that's cheap, but if you prefer going to a pick your own, certainly in our area in the UK, what the pick your own pumpkins have been doing is um, doing a minimum number. So it's 20 pounds just to go to the farm. And then you get a wheelbarrow and you um, fill up the wheelbarrow. Because they've had this problem with COVID that they need to restrict the numbers and the amount of people on the field, they are increasing the amount that you need to spend per family. So you get a wheelbarrow, you pay your £20 and you can have 15 pumpkins for that. Most people don't want 15 pumpkins. Most people are going for the biggest, the nicest looking to carve. Um, and some unusual ones, again, for a nice autumn display, but they don't often use them. So this video is a very short one today and it's just to show you how to cut up and process your pumpkins ready for use. And the eagle-eyed among you will notice that we have an imposter here. This is a squash. Um, and it's, you can see it's, the pumpkins all have the same kind of look. This squash is a bit different. It's pointed at the bottom. You may pick up something like this from a pick your own pumpkin farm. They tend to do a variety of squashes as well. Pumpkin is just one type of squash. Now you, I don't know how well you can see here, but the smaller one here is darker than this one. And this one is darker than the big one here. This big one was grown by our friend Dave. Thanks very much, Dave, for this, this awesome. And this one here was grown by Rose on her allotment. And as I've said, the little one was from Tesco. I just wanted to show you that you can eat the ones you get from the supermarkets. So as you will notice with the color differences, the smaller they are, the more flavor they tend to have. You can eat the big ones. They tend to have less flavour and slightly more watery, but you can just drain the water out by putting the pulp into a sieve. It's no problem at all. There's a lot of good eating in these pumpkins and I bought three of these little ones because, as I said, we love pumpkin and I'm just, it freezes wonderfully. Um, so I will process them and freeze them. They also store very well. They store better if you keep the stalks on, which is what I've done with the ones we've grown. Obviously, um, the supermarkets just chop their stalks off. So, let's get cracking. Right, I'm going to show you with the little one from the supermarket today. It's the same principle, um, no matter what you're, no matter what size you're doing. And this will just show up easier on the camera. So. Most people, what they do if they're using this for carving their pumpkin, is they cut round the top. Do cut at an angle. If you cut straight down, then your lid might fall through. So most people cut at an angle, 
take the top off and scoop the insides out. However, brace yourself for this, it is mind blowing. Turn your pumpkin over and cut out the bottom. The first cut is always the hardest. You might be able to switch to a smaller knife. The winter squash have a tough skin on them and that helps them to um, store well. Nearly there. Right. Now the reason we cut off the bottom is the bottom is where most of the seeds and the gubbins are um, connected. So we can just cut this off. Now these orangey pithy bits here, it doesn't matter if you've only got a little bit, but they can be bitter. Now with the supermarket pumpkins, I'm not going to save the seeds. I will save the ones that we have homegrown. So at this stage what you would do, scoop out the insides, carve your pumpkin. Now with scooping out, it's, it's a messy job, it's literally hands in get all the bits out. At the end of this video I will post a link to um, recipes. I, I, actually it's, it's one um, web page but it's got lots of recipes for different flavours for the seeds for roasting the pumpkin seeds. Our big pumpkins that we have home grown will have, I mean you can see how many seeds, I'm getting loads of seeds out of this great for a snack um, so our big pumpkins are going to have loads and I will save those I'm actually just going to roast them plain and then we can put them into bread so you can see we're getting there and we got this stringy stuff stuck to the edge it's just a case of scraping it out once you've got all of the seeds out you can go in with a spoon and just scrape the stringy stuff off, okay? We'll come back when that's done. Right, that's that done. As you can see, most of it is out and there's still a little bit left. But if I get this while I'm scraping, then I will um, just deal with it then. Okay. Now, most of you are going to be um, having your pumpkin for Halloween. Do scrape out the insides, the, the flesh. So we've, we've taken out the, um, the stringy bits and the seeds. Most people do that and then they stop here and just carve. And I appreciate that can be it but it is the worst part that bit scraping out those you ask the kids to do it the kids get bored very quickly and you end up doing it yourself and if you have more than one child or more than one pumpkin it can get very tedious indeed but don't give up we do set aside for pumpkin day um, and then you can just take breaks when you need it now when you get to this stage um, have a saucepan nearby and we're going to continue scraping as you were with um, the innards. And I don't know if you can see here on this bit. This here is the flesh. It didn't. I did manage to scrape out some of the flesh while I was scraping out the stringy bits. So you literally just keep on digging through. And that's the flesh. It is a different colour. 
this will make it a lot easier to carve as well if you do um, shaded pumpkin carving this helps with that too so you'll have some bits thicker some bits smaller now you'll notice that it's it's a bit stringy and what this will make is pumpkin pulp and loads of recipes use pumpkin pulp I will be putting up some recipes and um, well actually I saw today some pumpkin puree in a can in the supermarket so it's not something that's been widely available here in the UK but that was just in the supermarket today now what I'm going to do I'm going to do half of this pumpkin by scraping out and because we're not carving this one I will take off as much flesh as I can and actually if you make um, a pumpkin soup these and, and you're serving it up these size of pumpkins make really nice serving bowls um, this is sitting okay because the top has been cut off um, you could always cut it flatter if you wanted um, or if you want to use it as a serving bowl then do it the other way up and then actually you've got a pretty lid to keep it warm as well I've got a recipe for a butternut and um, a spiced carrot and butternut soup which we've done with pumpkin in the past, which was very nice. That would be delicious if you had, uh, not that you're likely to have people around for dinner in these times, but um, yeah, that would make a nice serving dish. Or even the smaller ones could make fun little dishes, you know, individual servings. Fun for the kids, maybe. And the grown-ups, how should they have all the fun? Right, I'm going to come back when I finish doing this. Okay, I have done, well I think it's just under half the pumpkin. I've scraped that out. And this is what I've got in my pan. There are stringy bits and some big bits. And it doesn't matter so this is what to do if you still want to carve your pumpkin this is my carved side the thinnest side that is going to be really easy now to carve um, you've not going to get all the way through that flesh and it actually looks much nicer as a um, a carved pumpkin as a display rather than having this big line of orange flesh come through so what we're going to do now with this is we will put a little bit of water just to cover the bottom just like you would if you're cooking um, rhubarb or apple and um, just so that it doesn't catch on the bottom and then we're going to um, just cook that uh, just simmer it until it's gone all soft and pulpy just see there's a little bit of water there Pumpkins are quite watery, and the bigger your pumpkin, the more watery they are. Don't worry if you overdo it um, a little bit. You can always drain it in a sieve afterwards. I'm just going to put this on. Okay, now while that's going on, we will come back to the second half of our pumpkin. Now this is if you've got several, if you've got some that you're not going to carve if you've gone mad at the pick your own pumpkin place if your child has begged you for the small cute one and you can't be bothered to carve it we are literally just going to cut it up right 
right you can see there's still some flesh here um, I don't tend to bother around the top I usually just cut around here and get rid of this top bit there we go now we've got some flesh here that we can use but for ease ease of use I'm going to use this half now what you can do is you can cut your pumpkins straight away from whole and then just remove the seeds as you go along but what I like to do is cut them into wedges now I'm thinking about the size of pieces that I personally want to use like this this is what I want to use the um, a normal uh, peeler doesn't work too well with these because the skin is so thick so I just take the skin off like this now I'm doing this because I will be making a katsu curry pumpkin katsu curry with these I'll do a recipe video for that it really is lovely first had it at um, Wagamama's and it was really really lovely so this is a way to process whole pumpkins what you can what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to roast them like this first before I put the panko breadcrumbs on but roast pumpkin on its own is really nice it has quite a sweet flavour and you can process any of the squashes this way um, that you've got. So you've got a good bit of veg there. Um, if you find when you're going through your recipes that you enjoy recipes that use pumpkin puree, you can um, process your pumpkin like this because it is quicker. Um, chop it up into smaller pieces. Cook it um, on the hob just uh, boil it and then use a masher to mash it up and have your pumpkin puree that way as you saw I've got three of these small pumpkins and most of what we use is for pumpkin puree however um, Rose um, is really liking roasted pumpkin at, at the minute so I will roast them put them in the freezer but I'll also do some in panko breadcrumbs cook them and then freeze them um, so we can just take them out when we want to use them for katsu curries Right, I shall continue with the rest of this Chopping it up and here we are all finished as you can see it's made quite a lot of um, Squares triangles whatever here. There's some um, Certainly a good few dinners in here for us. Now I'm going to show you just very quickly how to roast them and then from then on you can um, either serve it as is or you can um, do something else with them. So I'm going to bowl, put all the pumpkin inside. Roasted pumpkin is a good way to make the soup actually because it really brings out a very nice flavour. Sorry, should have had the oil prepared. I've just got some vegetable oil and I'm just going to drizzle it over and mix it up just to make sure it is all coated. The if you watched our um, other videos, we found that really little tiny butternut squash. Well, you'll be pleased to know it was ripe and we had it the other day. I just chopped it up, did this with it um, and roasted it in the oven. And we actually had it on top of um, sticky rice with other veg as our lunch. Now I've got a tray here and um, I like to use a baking liner because I don't like the grease. It's hard to get off the baking trays. 
Let's put them on the tray. You can hear the pumpkin puree bubbling away. That's almost done. I don't, it's not been 10 minutes. Cutting the pumpkin up this way is a really quick and easy way to do it. I'm going to need another baking sheet, so I'm just going to spread these out a bit more. Right, there they are waiting to go in. My oven is preheating to 180. How long they take to cook will depend on the thickness of them. You can see I've got some quite different thicknesses there. Basically, you want to put your knife in um, easily, just like how you would check a roast potato. I'm going to put these on for 20 minutes and then check. I've turned my puree off and we're going to just finish that off. Here we go. You can see there's a bit of water in the bottom. I'm just going to leave that there for a moment because we will get more. And I'm just going to give it a quick mash. It is really soft, easy to mash. And it takes no time at all. Obviously, it would be a bit longer if you were doing it from if you'd like boiled up some chunks of pumpkin. This is how easy it is. That's finished. And because there's some water left in there, we're just going to drain that. Just got a sieve over a bowl. Going to let that sit there for a bit. I'm going to let that drain, um, not get too firm, but drain most of it out as it was um, quite watery. I did top up the water as we were going along so that it didn't burn. And this now is ready for your pumpkin puree use. You can let it cool down, put it into a bag and freeze it. I freeze it into 500 milliliter lots because that's what a pumpkin pie takes. Um, and also I can take that out of the freezer and make some pumpkin cookies with it. Now I'm going to put the um, chunks of pumpkin into the oven. And by the magic of television, here we are 18 minutes later they're um, nicely done I'm now going to leave them to cool some of them the ones that have um, caught slightly gone slightly browner than um, ideal we'll just have them as roast on their own so at this point you could um, puree them to make soup you could use puree that we did in the other method as a soup some of these I'm going to use for um, katsu as well. So look out for the videos coming up. Just wanted to show you how to use your pumpkin. And this one, um, the puree that we did earlier, I'm just going to pop it. This will keep in the fridge for a few days. Um, there we go. Now one last thing I wanted to say was don't give up on pumpkin. If you make some pumpkin pie for example and you don't like it, do give other methods a try. It's such a versatile vegetable and it can have so many different flavours. When I first tried pumpkin pie I couldn't stand it and I had this Halloween party and I had friends around and none of us had ever had it and none of us liked it. It was um, not very good. It is um, whether I used a rubbish recipe and now I have a fantastic recipe, I don't know. But we are all big fans of it in this house. We are fans of pumpkin in all its guises. So, um, don't put your pumpkin in the bin. Do use it and uh, so watch out for the other videos. Let me know what you do with it. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.